Prime Minister Khan. The US military is finally withdrawing from Afghanistan after 20 years. Are you happy about that? Happy in one way, because there was never going to be any military solution in Afghanistan. Anxious that they are leaving. Without a political settlement, there's a possibility of civil war. What would a political settlement look like in your mind? A political settlement in Afghanistan uh, would mean a sort of a coalition government, a government from the Taliban side and the other side. There is no other solution. Do you think the Americans made a mistake by saying we're getting out by September the 11th? Difficult, you know, they, were, they got themselves, they have got themselves in such a big mess. They had to give some sort of time frame. But that the moment they gave a time frame, Taliban would have considered that a victory. How do you feel about the prospect of the Taliban effectively controlling Afghanistan? Are you happy to welcome them into the community of nations? As far as Pakistan is concerned, whoever represents the people of Afghanistan, we will deal with them. But what if they're not democratically elected? Does it not concern you on some level that, that this group of people is, is accumulating power right next door to you? Look, I'm not a spokesman for Taliban. For me to say, you know, what they are doing or what they shouldn't be doing is pointless. In case Taliban go for an all-out victory, there is going to be incredible amount of bloodshed. And let me tell you, the country that is going to suffer the most after Afghanistan is going to be Pakistan. We already have three million Afghan refugees here. And this could lead another exodus. So that is our biggest concern. The Americans, before they leave, there must be a, a settlement. Let's talk about the relationship with the United States. Um, the American CIA director, Bill Burns, made an unannounced visit here to Islamabad. Why? Ever since 9-11, there's constantly been in touch between, between, the, between the intelligence agencies. Did you meet with him? No, I didn't. Did anyone from your administration? Uh, I, yes, our, our uh, head of ISI. The Americans want to have their spies here and special forces based here in Pakistan to keep an eye on what's happening across the border. Will you allow the American government to have CIA here in Pakistan uh, to conduct cross-border counter-terrorism missions against Al-Qaeda, ISIS, or the Taliban? Absolutely not. There's no way we're going to Seriously? allow any bases, uh, any sort of action from Pakistani territory uh, into Afghanistan. Absolutely not. Pakistan suffered 70,000 casualties more than any other country by joining the American war. We cannot afford any more military actions from our territory. We will be partners in peace not in conflict. The American military right now is, is discussing doing airstrikes potentially to support the Afghan forces against the Taliban. Would you allow the American Air Force to use your airspace for those airstrikes? We are not going to be part of any conflict anymore. But you haven't decided yet whether that you'll let them use your airspace? This hasn't been discussed at all, so... What's your feeling about that? I don't know. We'll discuss this. You know, why would the Americans be using bombing Afghanistan to after it hasn't worked for 20 years? Why will it work again? Have you spoken to Joe Biden since he took office? No, I haven't. Is there a reason for that? Whenever he has time, he can speak to me. But at the moment, clearly, he has other priorities. What would you say to him if you had a meeting with him? The U.S. has a big responsibility. Most powerful nation in the world. This is a Oh, almost 1.4 billion people are living in the subcontinent. We are held hostage. One dispute in Kashmir, a disputed territory, according to the United Nations Security Council resolutions, there should have been a plebiscite for the people of Kashmir to decide about their own future. That has never taken place. It's festering. It can easy, if the Americans have the resolve, the will, this can be sorted out. Intelligent analysts say that Pakistan has the fastest growing nuclear arsenal anywhere in the world. I don't Why? think, I don't, I don't know where they've come up with this, 
Pakistan's nuclear arsenal is simply as a deterrent to protect ourselves. But you're growing it, not shrinking it. I, I'm not sure whether we are growing it or not, because really? uh, uh, as far as I know, our nuclear, the only one purpose, it's not an offensive thing. Any country which has a neighbor seven times the size as Pakistan has would be worried. Is your goal vis-a-vis -vis India and Pakistan nuclear disarmament? I'm completely against nuclear arms. I always have been. We've had three wars against India. And ever since we've had nuclear deterrent, we have had no war between the two countries. We have border skirmishes, but we've never faced war. The moment there's a settlement on Kashmir, I believe the two neighbors will live as civilized people. We will not need to have uh, uh, these nuclear deterrents. Last year, you wrote an open letter to leaders of Muslim states, asking them to unite against Islamophobia, particularly in the West. Why did you feel the need to write that public letter? The problem is there's this big communication gap between the Islamic world and the Western societies. It happened after 9-11, when the word Islamic terrorism came into currency. The moment you say Islamic terrorism, the man in the street in the West thinks that there's something in Islam which leads to terrorism, or Islam causes radicalism. After 9-11, any time some terrorist act went on where a Muslim was involved, the entire 1.3 billion Muslims started becoming targets. Just across your border in Western China, the Chinese government has imprisoned more than one million Uyghur Muslims in re-education camps. The Chinese government has tortured Muslims, forcibly sterilized them, and they've destroyed mosques in Xinjiang and also punished Muslims for fasting, praying, even giving Muslim names to their children. Prime Minister, why are you so outspoken about Islamophobia in Europe and the United States, but totally silent about the genocide of Muslims in Western China? what uh, our conversations have been with the Chinese, this is not the case, according to them. The evidence is just overwhelming. Whatever issues we have with the Chinese, we speak to them behind closed doors. China has been a great, one of the greatest friends to us in our most difficult times. When we were really struggling, our economy was struggling, China came to our rescue. So we respect the way they, they are, and whatever issues we have, we speak behind closed doors. How come this is such a big issue in the Western world? Why are the people of Kashmir ignored? It is much more relevant compared to what might be going in the Uyghurs. 100,000 Kashmiris have been killed. There are 800,000 Indian troops, which have literally, it's an open prison in Kashmir. Nine million Kashmiris are put there. Why is that not an issue? It's so I think it's hypocrisy. They've been a huge partner to you, China, but on some level, doesn't it make you feel sick to have to be quiet because of all this money they're putting into Pakistan? I look around the world, what's happening in Palestine, Libya, Somalia, Syria, Afghanistan. Am I going to start talking about everything? I concentrate on what is happening on my border, in my country. This is on your border. Which is, which is part of, no, that is part of Pakistan. 100,000 Kashmiris are dying. That concerns me more because a half of Kashmir is in Pakistan. This is a grotesquely large human rights atrocity. I would... First of all, I'm not sure about that because our conversations, our conversations with the Chinese, this is not the picture I'm sure they that comes that. from that side. So just to put a fine point on this, you are not in any way concerned about the Muslim Uyghurs in Xinjiang? Our discussions with Chinese will always be behind closed doors. You were asked about the epidemic of sexual violence and rape in Pakistan. And you acknowledged the seriousness of the problem and you talked about Pakistan's strict laws. You were also quoted as saying that the practice of women wearing veils, quote, is to stop temptation. Not every man has willpower, you said. On increasing vulgarity, it will have consequences. And you were accused of rape victim blaming. How do you respond to that? It is such nonsense. I never said veils, uh, this was never said. I said the, the, the concept of parda. Concept of parda is avoid temptation in the society. We don't have discos here, we don't have nightclubs. 
So it, it is a completely different uh, society way of life here. So if you raise temptation in the society to the point, and all these young guys have nowhere to go, it has consequences in the society. Do you think that what women wear has any effect? That, that that's part of this temptation? If a woman is uh, uh, ve wearing very few clothes, it will have an impact on the men, unless they're robots. I mean, it's common sense. Uh, yes, but is it really going to provoke acts of sexual violence? It, it depends which society you live in. If in a society people haven't seen that sort of thing, it will have an impact on them. If you grow up in a society like you, maybe it won't on you. This cultural imperialism, whatever is in our culture, must be acceptable to everyone else. It's not. But forgive me, like, when you were a cricket star, you know, you were, you were seen in, as a playboy, you know, there were photos of you with your shirts off in and your bedroom. Like, it's Jonathan, a bit rich for you to be criticising this. This is not this. about me. It's about but you're my the messenger. Jonathan, listen, it's about my society. My priority is how my society behaves, what, what reactions are caused in my society. So when I see sex crime going through the roof, we sit down, we discuss how we're going to tackle this. It is having an impact in my society. We have to do something about it. Thank you so much, Prime Minister. Okay. Really appreciate your time. Oh, Jonathan, you did go a bit long about that.